Welcome again. Right now we're at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Afflicted, but never destroyed. Paul goes on saying, But we have this treasure, the treasure of the glory of the knowledge of Jesus, the knowledge of God, in clay vessels, which means in our physical bodies, which are clay vessels. If you remember, God created man from the dust. He used the dust of the earth to create man. So really, we are just clay vessels, physically speaking. The treasure is the knowledge of God, is the knowledge of the glory of Christ, the gospel, in clay vessels within our bodies. That the exceeding greatness of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. We are pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Quite a statement of strength here. Pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not to despair. Pursued, yet not forsaken. Struck down, yet not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the putting to death of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For those of you who are really, truly Christian, what I mean is you don't just give lip service, you actually walk the walk. You don't just talk the talk, you walk the walk. So for those of you who are real Christians, you always bear the death of Jesus. And what does that mean? Number one, Jesus forsook his own will. He denied himself. He denied his feelings. He denied his own desires. He's like father in the garden of Gethsemane. He said, father, you know, take this cup from me. I don't want to be crucified like this, but not my will. It's not about what I feel. It's what you want. And God wanted him to be crucified. So Jesus completely surrendered himself to the will of the Father, completely denied himself to death. And that's what Paul is talking about here. That even when he's persecuted, he's persecuted just like how Jesus was persecuted. So that begs the question, why was Jesus persecuted? Well, you see, Jesus was human. And in the eyes of a lot of people, that's all he was, was human. So they're like, well, who does this guy think he is? Like some, a lot of people said that, you know, who do you think you are, Jesus? Because Jesus preached against their sin over and over and over again. That's why they hated him. That's why they wanted to persecute him. That's why they wanted to destroy him. Remember, in the book of John, Jesus said very clearly, the world hates him. Now, in a lot of churches today, they portray a Jesus that would be so loving and so, you know, just, you know, in with everybody and just such a cool dude or such a hippie that would just go around and hug everybody and give everybody a kiss and all kinds of other nonsense like that. Jesus said the world hates him. That's the real Jesus. That's not the fake Jesus that you hear in most churches today. That's the real Jesus. He said the world hates him. And not only did he say that the world hated him, but he also gave us the reason why. He said the world hates me because I testify that its deeds are evil. Preacher, are you Christ-like? Are you really Christ-like? Do you preach against the evil of this world? Do you preach against the evil of the sinners that walk into your so-called church? By the way, it's not your church. If it's a true, it's if it's a real church, it's not your church. It's God's church, okay? You don't own the church. So what Paul is saying here is just as Jesus denied himself unto death, was persecuted, was pressed, was knocked down, just as he was knocked down, just as he was persecuted, so we are. We bear about the death of our Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. Can you really say that? Can you really say that you are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake? Can you really say that? If you're preaching hard against sin, like Jesus did. If you're preaching hard against hypocrisy, like Jesus did. If you're calling people hypocrites, 
whitewashed tombs. You know, you look great on the outside, but on the inside, you're full of stinking, filthy, dirty, rotten, you know, rotten flesh. If you say that to some of the people that come into your so-called church building, you might be facing a little bit of persecution too. Are you really Christ-like there, pastor? Are you really Christ-like priest? Do you really preach like Jesus preached, church leader? Jesus didn't think twice about calling people sons of hell, brood of vipers. You know, you come from a family of snakes. You are sons of the devil. In fact, he even called one woman a dog, and he refused to give her a miracle because she wasn't a Jew. Can't you just hear the leftists screaming racism, sexism, all these other kind of stuff? Hey, this is what it says in the scriptures about what Jesus really did, about the real true Jesus, not about this hippie fairy kind of Santa Claus like holly jolly figure that a lot of people claim to believe in. Let's believe in the truth. If you're going to talk about Jesus, if you're going to believe in God, let's get the real deal. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus may be revealed in our mortal flesh. So then, death works in us, but life in you. And as I always, seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.